Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you as ever for stopping by. Uh, let me start with some home thoughts. Uh, this is from the Saatchi Gallery, where I spent an afternoon and then went back and spent another one because it really was quite fantastic. This is Mark Quinn, who took introspection to new levels with self, made of the artist's blood, stainless steel, perspex, and a refrigeration system. For no good reason, that made me think of a quotation from Vladimir Lenin. There are decades where nothing happens, and there are weeks when decades happen. Felipe Fernandez Amesta, if you haven't read him, do, do uh, try and find his books, they're very good. He says, there has never been nationhood without falsehood. Truth threatens peace. Those who think they possess it tend to turn into victimizers of the rest. Like all the other bullies convinced of the superiority of their own race or class or caste or blood or wisdom. As I said, I had a wonderful trip to the Samburu and I have three different sunsets uh, to show you. And, uh, uh, first, they were all taken actually in the space of about 20 minutes. So it's one sunset seen three, at three different moments um, in the Samburu. And the colours were very beautiful there, I must say. Um, and uh, then I saw the Sachi Gallery tweet, creamy tangerine heat radiates from Mark Rothko's Oil on Canvas Number no. 8 of 1952. Always liked his paintings a great deal. Wish I could afford one. Kenyan Facts, a view of Mount Kenya from Lenana Peak, photo by Zidino V. Political reflections, so much going on. Well, let's try and deal with a few. Russia has warned the US-led coalition fighting in Syria that it will view its aircraft as targets after Syrian military plane was shot down. The coalition said it had shot down the Syrian Su-22 after it bombed US-backed fighters in Raqqa province on Sunday. Russia, Syria's main ally, said it was also halting communications with the US aimed at preventing air incidents. Syria condemned America's flagrant attack, saying it would have dangerous repercussions. Russia responded, saying any aircraft, including planes and drones, belonging to the international coalition operating west of the Euphrates River will be tracked by the Russian anti-aircraft forces in the sky and on the ground and treated as targets, the Russian Defense Ministry said. My conclusions are that this has the potential to spiral right out of control. Iran, for example, launched its first missile attack abroad in over 15 years. The Saudis and Americans are especially receivers of this message, he said. Obviously and clearly some reactionary countries of the region, especially Saudi Arabia, had announced that they are trying to bring insecurity into Iran. The Zolfagar missile, unveiled in September 2016, was described at the time as carrying a cluster warhead and being able to strike as far as 700 kilometers. Uh, so, there again, further escalation. The White House is not just doubling the bet in Iraq, it's doubling the bet across the region and the world. They could get this could get very complicated. Everything is upside down. This is Martin Indyk. So I think it's a very uh, um, uh, feverish situation, actually, and anything could happen. It's difficult to model what happens after that. The number of displaced people in the world has reached 65.6 .6 million, more than the population of Britain. I like this cartoon, Brexit Talks Begin. And just going back to something I wrote in January 2015 when I was talking about the attacks on the streets in Paris, and I was talking about Europe being off balance, but it certainly feels as if the United Kingdom is off balance at the moment as well. And I said then, the arrival of the asymmetric threat on the streets of Paris was deeply unsettling, and 
surely will keep Europe off balance. And I also said it presaged a new normal. I think that's evidence to what we can see in London. Sky News published this photograph, Finsbury Park attack, angry crowd, pins down killer Van Driver. And then what really took me aback, this Grenfell Tower, the death toll has been raised to 79. Um, I think we need to understand who these people are, at least 79, because there is a big clue in that list. It seems to me a lot of them were intelligence assets. Theresa May, a profile by Matthew Paris, BBC News. Now, take a look at that. That's pretty interesting, about 11 minutes. Um, and uh, it's not clear to me that she can hold on, or she has the uh, capacity. It seems very, very frigid. I mean, not to be able to go and empathise with uh, the Grenfell people. I had the Queen go instead. Turkey's steadfast support of Qatar has stood out since the dispute began, says Strat 4. Not only has Ankara provided diplomatic and trade assistance to Doha, but it has also moved to expedite the deployment of Turkish forces to Qatar, a decision that will fortify the common ground forming between the two countries. And they were quite cheeky as well, offering to have a base in Saudi Arabia as well. Um, and keep an eye on Sisi because he seems to be the lead in a lot of these, uh, in a lot of his comments. He's talking about blockading uh, Turkey as well. well. not Maybe not blockading, but, you know, responding. New Cold War in the Indian Ocean, very interesting article in the Asian Times. New Cold, Cold War is brewing in the Indian Ocean with an informal alliance with the United States, India, Australia, Japan on one side and China on the other. More than 60% of the world's oil shipments pass through the Indian Ocean, largely from the Middle East's oil fields to China, Japan and other fuel importing Asian economies, as does 70% of all container traffic to and from Asia's industrialized nations and the rest of the world. While traffic across the Atlantic has diminished in recent years, and that which crosses the Pacific is mainly static, trade through the Indian Ocean is fast growing. Strategic ripples are gathering. At Obok in Djibouti, situated on the Horn of Africa and overlooking the southern gateway to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, China has established its first foreign military base, ostensibly to fight piracy. The facility is located next to a key U.S. military facility, also in Djibouti. More importantly, it is also close to other bigger U.S. bases in the region, including a huge facility at Diego Garcia, just south of the equator in the Indian Ocean, as well as U.S. installations in Gulf countries. China's main regional rival, India, has always considered the Indian Ocean as its own lake in South Asian sphere of influence. Um, and talking about India's great new Far Eastern naval command based on those ar archipelagos to protect its interests in the region. And saying then there is France, which does not take part in joint naval exercises, but is a US partner in NATO while the least prominent of regional partners because of its possession of small islands scattered across the maritime region, its exclusive economic zone in the Indian Ocean measures 2.5 million square kilometers. And saying, while the situation is still far removed from open confrontation, the Obor initiative in China's new military facility at Obok are threatening to break the car. And while China is in the Indian Ocean to stay, the emerging alliance designed to counter that influence may not for much longer remain informal and hidden behind joint naval exercises without any officially stated geopolitical purpose. And this is what I was alluding to when I wrote in August 2013, I have no doubt that the Indian Ocean is set to regain its glory days. I start off by quoting Professor Felipe Fernandez Amesto, who explains the precocity of the Indian Ocean as a long as a zone of long-range navigation 
and cultural exchange is one of the glaring facts of history made possible by the reversible escalator of the monsoon. As I have no doubt that the Indian Ocean is set to regain its glory days, China's dependence on imported crude oil is increasing and the US is interestingly decreasing. I'm also certain that the eastern seaboard of Africa from Mozambique through Somalia is the last great energy prize in the 21st century and add to that, that you know, the volume of traffic that's going across the Indian Ocean. Um, uh, therefore, I said the control of the Indian Ocean becomes kind of decisive uh, and with control of that ocean, China can be shut down quite quickly. A sine qua non of President Obama's pivot to Asia's US-NATO power projection over the Indian Ocean, but increasingly feel that uh, Trump is giving China a free pass. Um, this is a photograph of Valley, the navigator who took us to Wasini Island on the Dow, um, using that exactly, the, you know, the winds that uh, uh, Fernandez Amesto was describing. And then when I was at the TCAD conference, Shinzo Abe said this, and I remember it. Japan bears the responsibility of fostering the confluence of the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. So you can see he's sensitive to, to what I've been talking about. Um, and I said, you know, it, the Indian Ocean is in many respects right in the geopolitical frame, I said in 2013. Um, uh, so, a very interesting moment. I think big, big resurgence of the Indian Ocean's economy. In it. Very interesting to see how things develop. Monarchs and mystics, aristocrats and Ayurveda, they're not compatible in many places. In Ibiza, they're deeply enmeshed. Then in those days, we didn't come to Ibiza for holidays. We came to Ibiza to change our lives. We didn't know what we were going to do, but we knew we were going to do something different. Painter Grillo Demo, shown here at his home, Villa Favorita, has lived in Ibiza since 1978. In Ibiza, in Ibiza, Bohemia, he reflects about his early years on the island. In those days, we didn't come to Ibiza for holidays. We came to Ibiza to change our lives. We didn't know what we were going to do, but we knew we were going to do something different. They found the lies, the junk, the misinformation of Traditional propaganda is widespread online and supported by Facebook or Twitter's algorithms. This is according to Philip Howard, Professor of Internet Studies at Oxford. The US report says the illusion of online support for a candidate can spur actual support through a bandwagon effect. Trump made Twitter center stage in this election and voters paid attention very true currency markets let's take a look euro dollar 111.61 dollar index a little bit firmer 97.47 japanese yen 111.55 swiss franc 0.9747 the pound 127.42 the australian dollar 0.7613 india rupee 64.495 South Korean won 1136.35, the Rial 328.26, Egyptian pound 180005, and the Rand 1295.93. We'll get to the story behind the Rand sell off in a little while. Dollar index, let me put up a three month chart. The Fed is being more linguistically aggressive of late in supporting that. Dollar rises to a three week high against the yen as well, so it's strength there. Amazon is eating the world. Stock price has just hit a fresh lifetime high of $1,000, $1,017, following acquisition of Whole Foods. U.S. stocks and U.S. economic surprises index appears to have decoupled in the last couple of months. This is from Jamie at Reuters, uh, which is an interesting point. Market cap, four largest companies, March 2009 to today, Apple, $74 billion. Now 763 billion. Google 92 billion. Now 675 billion. Microsoft 135 billion. Now 546 four, billion. Amazon 26 billion. Now 476 billion. Incredible. Gold set back only temporary, according to this theory of higher highs and higher lows. It's still going up, although. 
gets rejected. It got rejected at 1300, but each time it gets rejected, it's rejected at a higher level and bases out at a higher level as well. Crude oil, uh, this is WTI, $44.44. My target is still $32. I called it a Wizard of Oz moment. There is no one behind the curtain. The market is primed to crash. This is Brent Crude from via David Inglis. Courtney Freer, Saudi Vision 2030. The ruling bargain with the Wahhabi Aluma may simply become less sustainable. Um, at least in the way it has been arranged in the past, with an increasingly younger population hungry for change and a young ruler eager to provide it, at least in the social sphere. In the meantime, the goal of changing the social contract and altering rentier benefits may be fading or at least considered unattainable. Look, in August 2015, I wrote the end is nigh for crude oil and oil producers from Caracas to Luanda, from Rio to Abuja. And on that continuum, obviously Saudi Arabia has much deeper pockets, but you know they're not going to be able to avoid it. Emerging market investors think the bricks are back. Resurgent growth is reviving one of the past decade's hottest trades. Emerging market investors again piling into the so-called BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, pushing monthly flow inflows and stock prices to nearly two-year highs. The bet is that a pickup in the global economy will fuel demand for the country's commodity exports, drive an expansion of middle class consumption, and help them shore up fiscal accounts. Improving fundamentals, attractive valuations, and high yields in the yield starved world that make emerging markets once again attractive, including some of the BRICS. And on that note, Argentina is to issue a 100 year bond. Initial price target eight and a quarter percent, but they seem to have got it off at less than eight. Um, sold 2.75 billion of a hotly demanded 100 year bond in US dollars on Monday, just a year after emerging from its latest default. Let's move on to Africa. Equatorial Guinea is the highest per capita GDP in sub Saharan Africa, by the way. This chart shows what it is. I like this photograph. Kenya Airways KQ793, Captain to Nairobi, awesome service over Victoria Falls via Penga 1. Now, in South Africa, the Graf Ombudsman is seeking changes to the role of the central bank. Uh, I suggest changes to the nation's constitution to amend the Reserve Bank's primary objective of protecting the value of the currency. The Chairman of Parliament's Justice Committee should start a process to change the law section 224 that sets out the central bank's primary objective. Public protector Busisiwe Mekwambane said in a report, handed to reporters in the capital Pretoria on Monday, the proposed amendments remove the reference to the Reserve Bank's role to protect the value of the rand. That's the key phrase. Removing the Reserve Bank Reserve Bank's role to protect the value of the rand, the key element of the regulator's inflation targeting mandate. Um, Mekabani calls for the section to say the primary object of the South African Reserve Bank is to promote balanced and sustainable economic growth in the Republic while ensuring that the socio economic well being of the citizens are protected. The RAND extended the decline after the comments, weakening as much as 1.6% in Johannesburg on Monday. The market doesn't like the fact that they're looking at changing the constitution or the mandate of the Reserve Bank. There is concern about institutions being undermined. And this was one of the reasons Moody's gave when they downgraded South Africa. And conclusions you need to make your own. This is the outcome that all of us were expecting in our fight to the death, and a rather brutal and bloody one. South African all shows up 1.9% this year. Dollar versus Rand, let me put up a six month chart so you can see what's happened to it. Where it's still in the range though, you know, 1260 to about 1340. Egyptian pound, very stable at 18. Nigerian all share up, uh, mind boggling, 27.02% here today, to bear in mind the president's incapacitated and they've got a Caracas style FX system. And that speaks to what has been a spillover effect from 
money that's gone into emerging markets coming into some sub-Saharan African equity markets. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 14.55% this year. These are from Afrovisual data, urban agglomerations in Africa, 1990 and 2013. Top remittance receivers in sub-Saharan Africa in 2016. Interesting as well, this is, yeah, remittances overtook, for example, foreign aid uh, as, as, a, as a source of funds in Africa a few years back, actually. And then change in total fertility rate by Africa region 1990 to 2014. A lot of this uh, demographic uh, predictions, demographic dividend, in fact, I've seen 2 billion Africans by 2050 is driven by, it has embedded into it quite a sharp slowdown in fertility rates. And so far, we're not slowing down along that curve. Uganda's central bank lowered its key lending rate to 10% on Monday from 11%. Fabrice Montenero's photographs aim to highlight urgent ecological issues all over the world. His series, The Prophecy, is on show at Photo Basel 2017 until 18th June. Uh, he says the prophecy is a tale of hope and empowerment. Earth has sent her spirits to tell humans that they have the power to reverse what they have done to the planet. Nakamat yet to pay employees their May wages. This is a report in Business Daily. Financial troubles appear to have deepened. Uh, supermarket, which runs the highest number of outlets in East Africa, had by Monday not paid 1,555 employees their May salaries and had sent more than 100 on compulsory leave, citing low business volume. Retailer has 5,700 employees in Kenya, so the delay in completing the restructuring of its business, which involves attracting fresh capital, has seen it fail to honor this monthly liability on time, leaving its staff in financial distress. Some employees told the Business Daily that Nakamat has also not been remitting statutory deductions to various agencies, such as the National Hospital Insurance Fund, and the National Social Security Fund, but the retailer insists they are up to date. The retail chain is awaiting a $75 million cash injection from an unnamed private equity fund, has in the past three months seen stocks disappear from its shelves as big suppliers such as Unilever stopped deliveries due to mounting debts. My conclusions are that it's a death spiral. Nick Mutati, who follows me and I follow him on Twitter, sent me some a tweet of some elephants at Lake Jeepo in Savo West National Park. I've never been to Lake Jeepo and I've been wanting to go there for ages. Kenya shilling 1 in 360, Nairobi all share closed lower yesterday, minus 0.72%, but it remains up 14.72%. Underpinning all of that is Safaricom, which is up 20.1% year-to-date and firmly in a bull trend. Um, in yesterday's commentary, I think, you know, the skeezer tunes, the music app, is a signal of a much more aggressive e-commerce posture. And I think investors will be well paid and will be well rewarded for even getting in here. Standard Group rallied 6.85% to close at 39 and is plus 136.36% in 2017. The best performer of the Stock Exchange National Bank is up 57.35% this month and since the KCP Group share swap acquisition story broke. Ken Jen is at close 2.33% better and that's up. A blistering 51.72% so far this year. Mumia Sugar Company closed at its highest level this year, up 60% this month, but it's very speculative. And it's telling me that this bull run is now mature if we're getting those kinds of moves and essentially uh, a company which is technically bust. NSE 20 up 12.45% is close at a fresh 11 month high. Thank you for coming by.